Hi, this is Susie of Trauma Informed Parent. I am very happy to be joined today by a wonderful yoga instructor. Karen Pierce has been practicing yoga for decades and teaching. She is a master yoga, yoga teacher trainer, holding numerous certificates, including one as a professional yoga therapist. And Karen's also the author of Yoga Bear, Yoga for Youngsters, a great book that, has, uh, that is available on Amazon. Hi, Karen. Hello. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate your being here. Thanks. I'm excited to be here with you. Well, I've seen you teach yoga to kids at our, our annual yoga fest, and I have to say you definitely have a gift in, in, in getting them to, uh, to move and, and to enjoy the practice. So I'm glad you're here. Um, I've talked to a couple people recently, um, Bessel van der Kolk and Peter Levine, and, and there's a common theme in, in when they talk about kids who have anxiety and about getting them to move. It all a lot boils down to movement. And I've also, you know, talked a little about what trauma-informed yoga is, but I'd really like to, to bring some specific tools to parents and caregivers that they can use while they're stuck at home with uh, with kids or a lot of people uh, on trauma-informed parent or with foster kids who are struggling through everything that's going on in the world right now. Um, I'd like to first, before we get into the tools, give an overview of why yoga is helpful for kids who, who may have special needs or who have anxiety. Well, uh, one of the tools I in every yoga class, um, I structure it the same way for kids, but the actual poses and the meditation and the games are different. But the first thing we always do is when they come in the room, I have them take off their shoes and put their socks in, you know, everything is, there's, there's a structure, which is really good kids like structure, but then the, the, the fun part is always different. And uh, the first thing they do is they come and they get, they roll out their mats, they get on their mats and rock pose. So um, rock pose is a uh, child's pose. And I have them do a check-in with what I call the three Bs. Check in with your body, check in with your, breath and check in with your brain and how fast is your brain going how fast is your body going is it going slow as a turtle or is it going fast as um a cougar or a you know a, a racehorse uh -huh. um and you know that so doing that every time gives them a reference point too to what they're feeling in their body so you know children's yoga you want them engaged but you want them embodied. They live through their bodies. Mm -hmm. So getting them to tap into how fast everything is going, or if they're really tired after a long day, mm -hmm. you know, how slow their body's going. Maybe they don't want to move so much. Um, to start understanding that, um, you know, where they are in, in, in level of energy. Yep. And without calling it anxiety, you're actually teaching them then what that is or how to recognize signs of without, you know, labeling it, I would think. Right. Great. Exactly. Well, yeah, I'm going to, you know, can you uh, show us or offer us some, some tools or some tools that parents and caregivers can use at home, both in the moment or, you know, to schedule time with their kids, some, some tools they can use to help kids feel better. Sure. Um, I can do, I will show you, um, some poses and a, a sun salutation and then some of the tools that you can use um because you know not every parent teach, takes yoga so they're not going to know all the poses or to remember this i mean they'll be able to go back to the to to re review this again mm -hmm. um but there are definitely tools out there so and one thing i'd love i have to say is that you a lot of the poses you you give names that are from nature rather than like what you said rock pose rather than child's pose um how come you do that with kids um well because um they love to mimic things and when you can well there's a lot of reasons for it connecting with nature is really important to stay grounded um and also the poses give us a lot of opportunity to um, use our imagination um, uh, also to uh, make a lot of noise. So um, I will do some of the poses where we make some noise. I'll explain some of them, but um, it gets really noisy in class and, um, and it, it allows the kids to just express themselves, use their imagination, um, become the, the yoga poses that are based on nature. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, it's all yours. 
All right. So after I have them come in and um, do a check-in, then we warm up with our sun salutation, which is a kid's version. So um, I'm just going to turn sideways so you can see. Okay. All right. Inhale. Reach up and touch the sun. Bend down and feel the earth. Step back. Look up and see bluebirds fly. Jump back and watch the ants go by. Belly down and smell the air. Tails up, you're a yoga bear. Step your foot forward, lift up your heart. Feet together like the start. Reach up and touch the sun. Arms down, we're almost done. Reach up and touch the, and they would yell back, sun. Bend down and feel the earth. Step back, look up and see bluebirds fly. Jump back and watch the ants go by. Belly down, smell the air. Tails up, you're a yoga bear. <laughs> Step the foot forward, lift up your heart. Feet together like the start. Reach up and touch the sun. Hands to your heart, now you're done. Lovely. And then um, after a sun sal salute, then we'll do poses. So one of the poses I like to start with is mountain pose and feel your roots grow into mountain pose. So, and this is where I go around and I usually go around and gently push on them to see if their mountain is strong and solid or if they're wobbly mountain and teach them how to get really grounded in their feet. And then from here, we look at me, I'm a tree. And we come into our yoga tree pose. Can you shake your leaves in the breeze? And then we always got to do the other leg. So I'll ask them too, if you could be any tree, what kind of tree would you be? Would you be like a short squatty bush? Would you be a big pine tree or Christmas tree? Or maybe you're a flowering tree. So they all go into their own um, pose mm -hmm. so that they're not stuck in our limited version of what a yoga tree looks like. Yes. Um, then from mountain pose, can you jump to elephant's trunk? And so this is where we start getting noisy. Can you swing your trunk? And then can you find some peanuts? And then how about we shower ourselves off? And we'll ask them for things that we can shower with and there's usually glitter involved. And then Stretch out your arms, turn your feet, reach. Can you dangle like a triangle? Mm. So we do a little bit of um, geometry here and I'll ask them if they can see the three triangles made from your body. The kids always get two, but they usually miss the third one. Let me go to the other side. So the first one is here, made by your arm and your leg. Mm -hmm. This one is the one they always see, the big one made by your legs. But they don't see the one made from the top to this foot to this foot. So you have your three triangles, your um, obtuse, equilateral, and right angle. And for the older and kids, they want a math lesson while they're doing this. They get a math lesson, yep. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, one of the frog pose, the kids love frog pose. It's getting a lot harder for me to do frog pose. You know, I'm a lot older than them, but they do love it. Can you squat like a frog? And we're gonna leap over a big log and leap the log. Turn around, squat like a frog. Now we're gonna leap a tall log and then we'll have them jump as high as they can. And let's see, um, one of the other ones that they really love is lion pose. Mm. And I like this one because it teaches them about breath work. So um, I'll tell them they're only allowed to take one exhale and they're gonna roar for as long as that exhale. And to see if they can beat me, and they can't usually, but. <laughs> so does a lion snore or does he roar? Show me your lion claws. And it's a silly lion because the lion sticks its tongue out and rolls its eye up to look at its third eye. So it looks like this. Mm -hmm. But then I'll have more. 
So we'll do, take a big breath in. Run! And we'll just go for as long as we can. That's great. Um, so um, the more noise, <laughs> the more movement, um, using your imagination. Mm -hmm. And then we'll end with um, the rainbow song. So I love to introduce the kids to the rainbow because everybody loves a rainbow, right? <laughs> it makes you happy. But it also introduces them for more lessons for me. And as they get older, we get into subtle anatomy, which is the chakra system and the auras, mm -hmm. which are part of your luminescent energy field. But it also allows me to talk about rainbow foods and eating healthy. Right. So I start them off with the rainbow song. And it goes like this. And so this also teaches them about kirtan and chanting call and response. Mm -hmm. So I would say, red, I'm strong. And they would repeat, orange, I'm joyful. Yellow, I know I can. Green, I'm caring. Blue, I tell the truth. Purple, I'm smart. I'm a rainbow. Wow. So it, it, it lays a foundation for me to build and build all the way through your teens. Yes. And then even to yoga teacher training. <laughs> well, like you said, it builds a foundation for chanting too, which is so calming. I, I love that you're incorporating all these without labeling them yoga, breathing, and chanting. Because I know when my kids were young and I would say, we're going to do some yoga now, we're going to do some breathing, they would often roll their eyes and, and resisted it. But to be a rock, to be an elephant, to sing about a rainbow, uh, to be a, li a lion, all of that is very different. And, and they're actually getting the physiological benefits, the anti-anxiety benefits of yoga without calling it yoga. They're actually playing. Um, that's right. tremendous. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then we play games too. Um, and all the games are based on um, encouraging cooperation, working together, um, compassion, um, you know, if the kid does have a meltdown, it's okay because yoga is all embracing. Everybody can do yoga or some form of it. And also it creates a community. So, um, so the games are always, a lot of them are nature-based. I play games where we'll actually blindfold one kid and make a runway and throw all the backpacks on the runway. And their command center, the tower, has to get them through their plane, then the plane, through all the obstacles successfully. Wow. So there's lots of games that we play that also create a lot of community, mm -hmm. even though they're not yoga. <laughs> and I would think this is also good for parents and caregivers because they too are getting the benefits if they play along. Yeah, absolutely. One of the final things I do is something called progressive muscle relaxation. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'll, I'll show you what I use. I don't know if you can see these very good. Um, I don't know if you can see them. They're beautiful. They're, they're, the, they're just the little glass beads that you buy to put in your vases. Mm -hmm. And so I have a big bag of those. And at the end of class, I will wrap the kids up in um, the mat. So they're perpendicular to the mat, so they're this way. Okay. And I roll them up, and I call it bug in a rug, but a lot of them say, wrap me up like a burrito. And then, so again, there's reasons for that, is that it reminds them of being swallowed when they're young mm -hmm. and it feels safe. And then because it, for me, it also keeps them from fidgeting. And, and my, my um, comments to them is there's no wiggling, no giggling, no touching, no talking during, during relaxation. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take that glass bead, we call it an eye diamond, and I put it right on their third eye. Mm -hmm. And I ask them to try not to let it fall off. So it keeps them very focused on the visualization. And so with progressive muscle relaxation, all I'm doing is bringing them from their feet to their head, having them tighten their muscles and relax. So starting with curl your toes, now relax. Flex your feet, now relax. Tighten your knees. And you just go all the way up their whole body and each time tightening and relaxing. So they're also learning where they carry tension in their bodies yes. and how to relax. This is great for parents and caregivers to do at bedtime, I would think. 
Yeah, and yes, and and there's you can go on YouTube and find you know progressive muscle relaxation, um, uh, easy enough to find. Um, and when my kids were little, we we had a whole routine with uh, sleepy spray. We would spray lavender on their pillows. Um, my husband would read a story, and then I would come in and do a relaxation with them. So um, one of the books that I loved that we used is this book called Moonbeam. Mm -hmm. And it's meditations for children. And so we would read a meditation and that's, that's how I started getting all the kids meditations and they, they had one that they particularly liked. And so once we got one, we really liked, we continued using it every night. So they got used to, you know, this very nice, how to relax and, and go to bed. That's great. And um, I love the idea of putting the glass stone there um, because that's also kind of fun. Yeah, it is because then they want to touch it and and <laughs> but their hands are in the burrito and <laughs> um, and then of course they're always can we take it home I'm like yes but on the last day of class you get to take it home so um, one of the other tools for parents again because I know you know not everybody has the toolbox that I have available is um, is something called yoga cards. I have like four or five of these. I also have a mudra cards. Um, these are really fun because what I would do, and, and these particular cards have those nature games, some of the ones that I play in class, mm -hmm. and they have cards for relaxation. So they help you to deal with body, mm -hmm. breath, and brain. So there's even breathing in here, like bunny breath, where you, you know, like you go, yes, bunny breath. So they're all color coded. Oh, did I see they were called yoga pretzels? Is that what that is? These ones are called, yeah, by Baron Baptiste. Okay. But there's many, many cards out there. Um, right. They're all different. Um, and I, like I said, I have a lot of cards. So I, I bring these cards in later in after we've developed a nice foundation, mm -hmm. but then I'll have them pick a card. And then they have to teach the pose because now they've learned all the poses so that they'll pick it and they'll just go like, Ugh, you know, <laughs> if, it's a, if it's one they didn't want. The smart ones started figuring out that all the pink ones were partner poses ah. and they love doing yoga with friends. So um, this is it, it's just a nice to link up where to uh, find these. So yeah, yeah. Uh, there's many, there's many different kinds um, and they also have mudra cards. So I'll have them pick them when we get again further down the road, teaching them what is this mudra, yana mudra for wisdom, you know, the ultimate yogi. Yep. <laughs> um, but some of the other ones, prana, the peace sign is prana. Yep. Um, so they'd start learning some of the mudras too as we, you know, get deeper into the practice. That's great. Um, that, you know, these signs that we just do without thinking are actually yoga mudras, hand, hand yoga. Right. So, so those Love are some it. of the tools I use. Thank you, Karen. I mean, those are so helpful. And I know I've seen you in action and I've seen how much kids just eat up your class. So I, I really appreciate your offering this to other people. Um, your book, by the way, got to hold that one up. Yoga Bear <laughs> is available on Amazon, uh, Yoga for Youngsters. And um, I can personally vouch for that. It's wonderful. Thank you, Karen Thank you. Pierce. Thank you. Thank you. This is Susie from Informed Parent wishing everyone well.